example, are you one of these people who are a caregiver? You work giving care, you're a nurse or a support worker or something like that, or and you then come home and care for people at home, or maybe you're even a stay-at-home mom who has um, children that you're looking after all day, caring for, and, and have maybe some, and other people that you're caring for, like elderly people, elderly parents, or a dis, uh, child with some disabilities. Um, I One thing I found really interesting, I have a group that's um, managing fibromyalgia naturally, and if you're not in the group and want to be, there's a link in the description to um, that you can do that. So I found it really interesting that how many people responded to my question that they um, were caregivers and they had fibromyalgia. So is there a connection? I don't know. I just know that stress definitely is a connection. I know for myself, I was a caregiver. I'm a nurse and I worked full-time as a nurse. My name's Lynn Ann Galloway. My, I worked full-time as a nurse and I would come home and I had children that needed care as well as I had parents that lived next door to me that required care at various times or at least help. At one point, my father had injured himself. He had a dairy farm. And so um, finding someone to milk cows is very difficult. So I was actually milking cows in the morning, going to work, working full time as a nurse, coming home, looking after kids, and then, and, and then milking cows again. So yeah, I'm sure that there are, that contributed to me developing of fibromyalgia because stress is a big um, contributor to both um, developing it, I believe, as well as it certainly contributes to flare-ups. So that's kind of my experience in it. And if you have, I have some tips for you. And I hopefully that some of these tips will be helpful. And so one of the things I learned to do was actually Schedule time for me. Now, I know when you're really busy, and like I was when I was in my 40s and 50s, when there was, you know, you're kind of like in that sandwich thing, you've got older parents, you've got children, and all the other, your, I was working full time, all those other things. And maybe by the time you are listening to this, the pain has become an, a major concern. And that's why you're uh, researching and looking. And so I think personally speaking, I feel like pain is a way that our body says to us, that is enough. You need to pay attention to you. And I, certainly that's what happened to me. I mean, you, you get to the point where you can't do anything and suddenly you are the one that needs the care and not everyone else. Although it, it, you do push yourself through because you don't have a choice, um, which doesn't help anything. So some of the things I've learned, uh, did learn to do was to, um, to, for me, it was easier at night after I've got everybody to bed to spend some time doing something I love to do. And as the children were a little bit older, it was easier to um, incorporate things that I love to do with things that, that um, were playtime or learning for them. For example, um, I love to garden. Yeah, so the kids would have a little garden as well. So we would all spend the time in the garden. I'm teaching them how to garden as well as that was good time for me. Water was another thing. We had a pool and so spending time in the pool. Swimming, of course, is good for fibromyalgia. So that was a, a good uh, incorporating things in that help the family as well as myself. Um, doing hikes and not that I'm a really hiker, but just walking out in the bush and being in um, nature, uh, doing things, playing games in nature that would be helpful as not only for the children, but for myself. Um, my, uh, even when we were, when I was helping my parents, having grandparent time with children is always good. So while I was helping them help have them with my grandparents. So learning to do things that kind of make a combination so that it reduces the stress for you. Um, the other thing I noticed, some people that have done, and I certainly do this when I'm going to be around people that want my attention in the daytime, is to um, get up a little bit earlier and have some quiet time for me. So time, so what I like to do during that time is to read something positive, to do some meditation, and to um, write out things that I'm grateful for. And I do find a thing, writing out things that I'm grateful for um, helps to put 
um, increase those endorphins that help with, um, with stress so that you start off your day a little bit less stressful so that things go better. And so what happens when, when we're under stress, when you have all those things happening to you, is that it sends a cascade, cascading of hormones that put your body into a fight flight. And uh, when you're in that chronic state, that really does, one of the things it does is it uh, uses up a lot of vitamin B and makes you depleted in vitamin B. So if you are quite exhausted, I would have your doctor um, check your vitamin B because that B12 because that can be a biggie. Um, if not, I certainly take some vitamin B complex because your body needs uh, a com the combination, the family of vitamin Bs to work properly because they all work together. Um, what other tips can you do? So Epsom salts baths. I sometimes just like 15 minutes doing that with some essential oils that are relaxing. And um, that gets you away from people, gives you a little bit of time by yourself. And the, the Epsom salts helps with the muscle and the pain, as well as it helps to relax you. And I like to throw in some essential oils in there. So um, the other thing I like to do is if I don't have time to um, do an Epsom salt bath, just even using some um, essential oil like Stress Away, which is a combination and just putting that on, or if I know I'm going to be um, having extra stress for the day, um, just putting a little bit of that on and keeping it with me does help as well. And I do, I did put in the description where I like to buy my essential oils from because it is important you buy them from a good, good um, company. So the other thing I like to, another thing that sometimes there are people that stress you that don't, <laughs> so limiting your time with them, if that's possible, sometimes that's not always possible, but knowing when your limit is and then taking a break. Um, and certainly if you are somebody that's looking after somebody 24 seven, like if you have a spouse that's not well, or you have children that require 24 seven care and you're with them all the time, yes, you need a break. So, you know, if absolutely possible, um, uh, depending on where you live, I know some places have volunteers that'll come in for an hour. Some places have um, uh, offer uh, home care type of things where people will come in at no cost. So, um, and now, or if you can, having a friend come and give you a break for a, a half an hour or an hour where you can go do something that you actually love to do. You know, or sometimes it's just go have a nap. Um, uh, so whatever, whatever is important to you, it is really important if you're doing looking after somebody 24 seven to make sure that you have those breaks, because that will help you not to get into a flare. It will help you not to have so much stress and will give you some um, what I call fill the bucket. So that would be one of my suggestions if you're doing somebody some, looking after somebody 24 seven. And even if you can do some things that um, make games out of something that they like to do as well, with something that you like to do so that you can actually incorporate it, it, it in your day. And I always feel like we need to do something we love every single day. Now, if that's difficult, because caregivers tend to be people that care and put everybody else first before themselves. So just do it once a day or once a week. And then if, once you get comfortable with that, increase it a couple of times a week. And once you get uncomfortable, when you get comfortable with that, increase it so that you're doing it every single day. And that way will help to keep you um, from being quite so stressed as well as help you to not, um, your body not to say, wow, stop. That's, I think sometimes why we get into flares is because our body's saying to us again, you're doing too much and you need to pay attention. I, um, so if you have, <laughs> you want to reach out, I do have a program to help you to keep uh, your body working, you know, and manage your fibromyalgia. Naturally, if that's something you'd like to do, connect with me and I'm happy to share that with you and have an awesome day.